after all these mantras, we're going to be chanting mantras at least four hours every day. Yeah. That's why I said CD. What will I do with the CD? I mean, let's see how much of this you can do. How much of this you can imbibe into your life. Try, try. See, the thing is to keep trying. Keep trying. Now, we come to emotions and we come to Venus. Now, you see, Venus' own house is Taurus, which was the exaltation of the moon. Do you see that I am always showing you connections between two planets, the sun and Mars. What was the connecting sign? House, the first house, or the first sign, Aries. For moon and Venus, it is Taurus, the common or the connecting thing. So now, Taurus is the one which is bringing Venus in to picture. And his Mula Trikona or his office is the house of marriage. That's his job. Venus has only one job to get people married. And his exaltation, his highest delight is Pisces. So what does Pisces symbolize as far as Venus is concerned? Unconditional love, right? It is called bhakti. Bhakti. There is one word, bhakti, B H A K T I, study. And I just can't simply translate it. It is too deep to be translated. There are books and books written on this. It is a giving which is unmatched. It is the pure giving of love. To give love without conditions. Like a mother does for a child. Like a mother does for a child, but still she does for her child. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You see, I want to go beyond that. That is exaltation of Venus. But I want to be even, I want to make it even more exalted. Like Radha Krishna. Mira. Mira is the finest example. Mira, yes. Mirabai is a very fine example. The Sufis, the whole Sufism is about bhakti. I am the Sufi. You should understand so far. It's all bhakti. It is the highest level of giving. It is a joy. You can't stop yourself from dancing. You are so happy. You are delighted with that joy of union with God. It's a love which is unmatched. It is Venus's high point. And that is the house of spirituality also. <coughs> you see that? Mm-hmm. You can endure any amount of suffering because there is no suffering. You are so happy you don't realize the suffering. They said, no, oh, poor Mira. She was a princess. She was a queen. And she threw away her ornaments and she took her thing and started dancing on the road and saying, Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. And she started dancing. And the prince and the king and all said, this is madness. What has happened to our queen? And finally, you know, they, they, they had a special thing in which they finally gave her poison and killed her. Her husband poisoned her. And they say, the best was after that court hearing, she was kept on the side because she was a queen. She was given the status of being kept on the side. And so, the king uh, was doing the hearing and there was the judiciary and the Prince was supposed to give evidence. So Prince had to give evidence against his own wife and he had to do so. He was under pressure from everyone. And so what he does is he gives the evidence. He, he, his was the final evidence. As a husband, he has to say whether his wife has been beautiful to him or she is going around somewhere on the road. If he says, it's okay. It's my wife. What's your problem? If he says that, the whole thing would have collapsed. It was his test. His wife was Mina. So he went and gave evidence and he almost choked when he was giving that evidence because he knew that she was very pure. So they put the blame of impurity. It's easy to put a blame of impurity on any woman. It's the easiest thing to put on a woman. So when he finally went, he was allowed to see her once before this, you know, she was given the death sentence of poison, that he had to give the poison. She gave the condition that I will accept this verdict if the poison if my death, whatever is my death, is given by my own husband's hand. For me, there is no law. There is no country, there is no law, there is no king. My husband is my guru and he is my king. 
If he gives me whatever he gives me, I'll take it. So he went and gave her the poison. They said he took, she took the poison and turned her face. When she was turning her, when she turned her face, the back was completely Krishna. That means when she, when she was turning, she had taken the poison. She was half into death. She was smiling and she when she turned, the back was completely. He fainted there. And uh, ironically, within 30 days or 60 days, they were attacked by Akbar and completely wiped out. That whole kingdom was wiped out. Naturally, those people who give poison to Mira, they will only go. The whole kingdom got wiped out. They were. So you see, who did they give poison to? They gave poison to God. What did you offer to God? You offered poison. What did you get? This is what I am talking of the twelfth house. Offering. Mira is like Krishna. There is no difference between that. A bhakta can become like the deity. It merges. The bhakta merges with the deity. And what did you give? The husband such a stupid fellow. He ended up giving poison with his hands to God. God says, whatever you give me, that is what you shall get. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. The whole, whole clan wiped out. And look at the difference. The same Akbar, how did he become emperor? He heard about Mira and her bhakti. So he dressed up in uh, this thing and he came hiding and saw her singing and dancing and all that. Went and fell at her feet and please bless me that I may be the emperor of India. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she was. Oh, oh, oh. See the difference. That was a Muslim. And he got the blessing of Mira. And her own husband gave up on So that is the destiny of India. I do my history. So that is bhakti. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Is that why Venus is absorbing the sign of Jupiter? Because the husband gave the poison to Venus? Is that why he is absorbing That is a test. That is a test. We all pass the test. Are you smiling at the end of the day or crying? Bhakti, especially the bhakti is the toughest level to do. People think it's easiest, you know, you sing and dance about God and it's an easy life. It's the easiest spiritual path. No. It is the toughest spiritual path. I can't take that path. Honest or honest about it. I read about them, I study a lot. But I don't have the guts to take that path. Because that test I can't pass. It's tough. Okay? But that is the highest path. So, now you understand the fluid system in the body, what happens when we talk of the fluid of Venus. Venus is that entire fluid which out here is the high water mark, the ojas, which can recreate someone. This is your ojas. You have two options. All the food that you ate, when this fully digested, the purest and most powerful thing that is made inside your body is either the sperm in the case of men or the ova in the case of women. Right? And that is symbolic of the ojas. You have two options. To either give it out over here or to give it out over there. If you give it out over here, you shall be reborn because this is the house of rebirth. If you give it out over there, you will not be reborn. You will escape. Do you understand rebirth and emancipation from rebirth based upon what you do with your Venus? Your choice. So this is your choice. What are you doing with it? So when that, so this is a very high pressure. It's, a, it's the pressure of water. It's like the pressure of water, you know. The pressure on a man, it can be very bad. Because when this is created in the physical body of man, it can drive him mad. It can make him completely mad. Sometimes men who who have abstained or been completely celibate till 54 can become completely cranky, half mad. They become mad, cranky. They start behaving like madmen. It's very difficult for a man to handle this. So, most of them release it. 
But the real spiritual ones learn ways by which they can burn it and send it up to the twelfth house. So it can't go directly from there to the twelfth house. It has to go down and then up. It has to go down. It, see, the point is, it goes like this. This is the entire digestion. Okay. It actually becomes this. Okay. Then from here, what do you do with it? Either you release it and create another human being, or burn it and go for moksha. So that is why Venus is very crucial in spirituality. It's a very vital check, a very vital test. Tapasvi Yoga is defined as the ability to take this Venus and throw it away over here. For one who can do that is a Tapasvi. One who cannot do that is not a Tapasvi. Penance, every kind of penance, every kind of spiritual penance requires celibacy. Because the idea is not to throw this, to use this energy to be there. That is the reason for celibacy. Otherwise, there is no reason for celibacy. Where else will you get that energy? Which is called the energy of creation. We have the power of creation. So, you understand this water system? Mm -hmm. And how this water system is related to your physical body as well as what role it plays in your spirituality and your emotions. So, your emotions can be directed towards other human beings or it can be directed towards God. If you can feel that much love for God as you feel for another human being, or much more, then you are heading for the moksha. That is bhakti. That is what is called bhakti. It's a comparative term. Do I love God more than my husband? I think so. Okay, let's have the test. God give me a test. Then do you pass the test or fail it? 90% will fail it. Is there any connection with length of the Venus other than Taurus, or is the length more related to the moon? See, the moon has to do with the curative part. This, oh, the lymph also has to do with Venus. Ven Venus and moon are both involved over here. But what is happening here, it is Venus which is, see for example, white blood cells. is, is more Venus than it is moon. See, the white blood cells is more venous because it does the protective part of the body. It does the rejuvenation of the body. Somebody who has cancer, I straightway pick up this chart. <coughs> All the remedies that I give are from this chart. I don't care what is the lagna. Wear diamond in your right hand ring finger. I increase. When you, when you wear the diamond, you are increasing the sojas. And that is going to actually start working on your body. When you don't have ojas, you will get cancer. You get this? Venus is very, very important for any kind of immune system. The immune system is totally dependent upon Venus. So the nectar I tell them eat yogurt. Why do I tell them eat yogurt? Yogurt has to do with Venus. Yeah, nectar. So, the ne does the nectar directly become ojas? No, 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 no. Is there a connection? <clears throat> nectar oh. is responsible for keeping you alive for a day. It will keep you alive for one day. Every day we live is because of that tiny drop of nectar. Some days you feel more healthy, some days you feel less healthy, you don't know why you felt healthy. There is no reason for it. Now you know why. Yeah. The days you end up consuming more of your nectar, you are feeling healthy. The day you are doing less. Yeah. So the second house in this part <coughs> then, it's coming through food then. Yes, it is the food. It is the food system. Mm -hmm. And it is also the fluids. Even the food ultimately has to go into the fluid. Yeah. All the solid food you eat is absorbed by the blood. And the blood has to carry it around. Ultimately, it is the blood that carries the food. Mm -hmm. This is the river's fluid. Mm -hmm. The lymph system is not really carrying food. Yeah. The lymph system is, is carrying those things which are required to protect your body. Right. So you can say this is more of the lymph system, more of the white blood cells. Mm -hmm. yeah. So ascetics who uh, 
eat a certain diet to uh, limit the production of ojas in order to help them with their asceticism are making a mistake then because what they need to do is produce a lot of ojas and then be able to lift it up. Yes, they should be able to have the courage to burn it. Why run away from the problem? Use it. See what Vivekananda did was he used to have a lot of ojas. He also could have cut down his diet to have less production of ojas. But he did better. He had a big thing of charcoal. And he was thinking and sat on it and burnt his butt so bad so thoughts would not come again. <laughs> so his mind, his mind, whenever the thought of a woman would come, his mind would automatically associate to that, to the burning burnt butt. <laughs> it was such a horror that he put in his mind that the thought would not come. See, that's Vivekananda. Mm-hmm. That's why he is Vivekananda. <laughs> Are these examples for us to follow? No, no, no. <laughs> He's Vivekananda. We are not. We are not. <laughs> no. Why do we die so young? Pardon? Why do he die so young? Hmm? Why do we die so young? He was only 29 or something. He was meant to die. Yes. He was meant to die. Shankaracharya died at 30. What would he do? His job was done. By 32, his job was done. He had written a few billion words by the age of 32. Which, which for the next 2,000 years, Indians would sing day in and day out and still wouldn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you do hanging around such fools? Right? <laughs> okay, let's go to the next slide.